There we go. All right. Welcome to The Raw Truth About Entrepreneurship, episode number three. Today we have two guests with us. We have Jason Spencer from Tribely. We have Kevin Cole from Perform Destiny, Mike Rostowski from Rostowski.com, and I am Jonathan Mead. Today we're talking about failure and really, you know, the reality of failure as an entrepreneur. And, you know, I think sometimes people talk about their failures maybe like, later on as if it's like a lesson they've overcome but a lot of people I think shy away from really getting into the details of and the emotions of failure and and you know like how, how that how that affects your ego as an entrepreneur how it affects um, you know just just uh, your 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 progress as uh, as a servant in the world and as as a you know as as a leader I think a lot of us are afraid to fail so we don't take risks or you know things are going really well so we just try to keep doing the same thing and and we're afraid to you know to put ourselves out there in a big way so um, who wants who wants to go first <laughs> who wants to share about about their failures yeah I, I can start you off Jonathan um, my name is Jason I, I blog at tribe.ly tribally and um, I've been cursed with the, the strength of activation. So I'm a starter. I start a lot of things. And um, oftentimes it can get the best of me because I find myself kind of at this point, I guess, an authority on failure because I've been there so much. Um, but quite honestly, over the years, I feel like um, each time that I failed, I've um, I've progressively become more mature about it, and um, I, I've been able to reframe failure in such a way that it's been actually really useful to me. Um, probably the biggest, my biggest point of failure was about five years ago, 2008. I was a, uh, a young entrepreneur starting a uh, brick and mortar IT services and home theater business in my local town. And, uh, you know, things were going great. You know, I felt like things were, were um, uh, you know, escalating well as a business. And when the economic crash happened, we, we got into some financial hardships and things got really tough. And um, I literally um, found myself just not knowing which way to turn, and, and I was in a pretty bad spot. I, I entered into a really dark, depressing time of my life, and... Um, I actually ended up walking away from the business, the very business that I built back then. And um, you know, I remember the day so clearly. It was it was a dark, rainy day, and I literally left my car in the parking lot at, at my store, and I walked home in the rain. I walked eight miles home, and um, you know, it was depressing. It was I was numb to to what had just happened. And um, I didn't want to feel, you know, I just wanted to walk. And I spent three days, like, soul-searching during that time and trying to figure out, you know, what does this mean? What, what does it mean that I walked away from my business and I don't want to go back? Um, and, I, you know, after three days of soul-searching and wrestling with God and, and literally just, um, you know, tearing my soul to pieces and, and beating myself up for what I thought was my own failure, um, I got a phone call three days into the process, and um, you know it, it shocked the hell out of me. But I got a phone call, basically an opportunity to enter into a new stage of my life, which was internet marketing. Um, I was offered a position for a, a local firm for a friend of mine, and um, I was able to get a, a fresh start with a clean slate in a new industry, and, and that that was exciting and you know, an opportunity to learn from a, a dark place of failure in my life. That's awesome. Um, I'll, uh, I'll share a little bit as well. I'm Kevin Cole from Perform Destiny. And um, for me, it all got started um, when I took my first, like, normal 9 to 5 gig and uh, figured out that that was kind of, like, the status quo and uh, that... That was kind of what was expected. And up until that point, uh, I was a straight-A college student. I had all these academic scholarships. I had I had everything that we're supposed to have. And um, 
I entered that job. It was like in the medical field, so everyone was all proud of me and stuff. And uh, and then I, I I entered it and like immediately like on the first day knew I had made a huge mistake and I had to figure out okay this isn't right. What do we do from here? I didn't know anything about the online space. Um, I I was like the least internet savvy teenager in the world, and um, I just had to start from scratch and basically say, everything I've done up to this point, granted, will help me, uh, you know, in the future. But I need to learn a, w a different way, and uh, so I kind of had to like give up, I guess, on on the all the progress I had made and start something new. So then I started working uh, on the internet, trying to learn everything and anything about internet marketing, about blogging, about personal development. And um, it took me nine months from that first day to make my first dollar online. Um, and in that time I failed like, like it was my profession. Um, just a lot of random businesses that I kind of half-assed to be honest. But I was also like, my own fear of failure, I guess you could say, was inhibiting me from really pushing through with any of them because pretty much all of them could have been successful, but um, it took me so many failures to find my first success. And since then, you know, I've just learned and used that reference experience to uh, just try to move forward and view failure uh, as a learning experience always, always for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, damn, dude, Jason set the bar high with, like, walking yeah. through the rain for eight miles. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, so I, I, don't, I don't talk about it because I'm actually, like, I, I, I legally can't talk about my, one of my biggest failures, um, but, you know, my, my corporate career, the, um, it, it did not go well, and, and, and really it was, it was just just poor cultural fit, you know. Like I'm, um, everything that I am does not fit well with a a large Fortune 50, very conservative company, um, and it was kind of like a bad marriage, you know. I was like, I don't want to be here, and and, and they're like, ah, like dude, you're not working out so well. Like you're kind of weird, <laughs> and um, yeah, I mean, so when I left corporate America just about 18 months ago, it was a really hard, 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 hard decision um, and a huge piece of me felt like a huge failure and I was like you know what I can I can stick it out I'll just stay here you know I'll, I'll keep getting promoted keep making money um, I, I really didn't want to quit um, and and that was a really tough time for me because I I didn't want to leave something it was an incredible opportunity it was the job that you know so many people out of business school would would love to have they only hired um, three of us in the entire company that that year for my program, um, but when I when I really really thought about it, just it like I, I felt so drained and so down every time when I walked in that building, and I just it it wasn't what I wanted to do. Um, so yeah, I, I can totally relate with you, Jason. On like it's funny how even if something's not working at all, like it's absolutely not working. Um, I think in the in our early in the early years of Starting to learn to work with failure, we hold on to things way too long. Like when I think of some of the relationships I was in, like romantic relationships, or um, when I think about just like different project ideas or or jobs that I stuck out with, even though from day one I hated them, um, just but it was because I didn't want to be a failure. I didn't want to be a a quitter. Um, and I think since then I've I've really reframed. So my my big like reframe on on failure. It's like failure is just feedback. That's that's it. Like there's 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 really no such thing as failure. When I when I fail, I'm actually like, oh sweet, I just I just failed. Cool. I'm I'm not gonna do that again. Um, and it's not like oh I failed. I'm a horrible person. I, I suck. I'll never make any money. I'll never be worthy of love. Um, it's just feedback, and and you learn and you keep keep going forward. Um, so so yeah, I, I just kind of wanted to. To share that that just failure is just feedback and um, yeah, Jonathan. All right, I think I think one of my biggest failures 
for me that I, I really had to come to terms with was who I who I always thought I would be as a as a kid and as a, as a teenager. I, I had all these dreams of being a pro football player or being a rock star, or being a musician, or doing something creative and you know doing something that I was passionate about as I was growing up, and then like getting into the real world, as as they say, and realizing that. I was just, you know, I was not like my actions and what I was, where I was going was not lining up with that at all. Like, and, and in truth, I, I wasn't honest with myself about it at all. I was just smoking pot all day, like every day. And when I woke up, I would, you know, take a big bong hit. And then when I, you know, when I went to sleep, I would get stoned before I went to bed. And I just, yeah, I just felt that, you know, it was someday it was going to happen even though I would wake up and go to a job that I absolutely hated, I would do work that I didn't care about. And my life in general was just a lie. You know, there's this like huge cognitive dissonance between what I really wanted to do and the life that I thought I should be living or like that dream that I had throughout my childhood, throughout my, you know, coming of age years. And, and, and what I was actually doing, you know, the life that I was actually living. And it wasn't until I was honest with myself about where I was and what I was doing that I finally was able to shift that and start and, and change and and accepting that I had I had like given up, you know, I accepting like my complacency was a big a big catalyst for me in overcoming that failure and transforming it into something else. And kind of like, like Mike was saying now, um, I don't see failure anymore as, uh, as a bad thing or as, as something to be ashamed of. I see failure as just an error correction, you know, Oh, I, that was an error. That was a mistake or, or whatever that helps me get greater clarity on exactly where I want to go instead. And, and that's, kind of the way I see failure now. And I, I, I fail all the time. You know, there's ways that I'm failing every day because I I see that dissonance between where I where I am and what I'm doing and what what's really in my heart, you know? And that that feedback is is so vital and so important because without that, you know, you could risk living a lie or living out of harmony with you know what you truly desire for for the rest of your life potentially and and I guess I guess that's kind of the way I see the way I see failure now I mean I think Thomas Edison kind of had it right when he said like every time he got it wrong was just you know another possibility that he could cross off the list and you know it was another step toward figuring out the the right way uh, to do it, yeah. Um, so, so Jason, I want to ask: Are you um, five five years ago? You're walking through the rain, eight miles. You felt horrible. Um, you know, three days, and then uh, so now, just everything's perfect, right? You're, uh, you're just like you, you just you just make it rain. You sleep on bed on a bed full of money and. Well, it's uh, it's a little bit far from the truth, Mike, but. Um... Quite honestly, you know, Jonathan talked about um, living out of his heart, and um, my reframe on failure has kind of come through just experiences and realizing that what's happening through these various failures along my journey is that something seems to be drawing um, my passion and my art and my my true intention and love out of that place uh, in my heart. And um, it seems to be redirecting me. There, there's something that's moving, whether you call it the universe or God or energy or whatever. I, I feel something drawing me closer to what it is I'm supposed to do. And, um, you know, you, you can use words like purpose and intention. And I think, um, I think ultimately we're all drawn to serve the world in some way and offer our strength and our gift. And... So through many failures in my life, I feel like I'm closer to offering those gifts to the world. I feel like I'm 
um, I'm, I'm leaning into a place where I'm interested in, in serving others in failure in tough spots um, in, in much the same way that I was in that spot in 2008. I see others around me struggling in that spot and I want nothing more than be able to serve them in there in that area of their life and and help them through it. Um, th nothing excites me more than seeing great artists uh, come alive through failure. My wife is a personal inspiration of mine who uh, she's a painter and an artist and I've seen you know as we've gone through some dark times as a family I've seen in those times she embraces her art and she really creates just beautiful beautiful things and it's so inspiring to watch that process and I think I think there's something in that for all of us in those spots that we perceive as failure that that kind of kind of I feel like brings something up in me that hmm yeah, it brings up in me this this question of what does failure give us? What is what is the gift within failure? Um, Kevin, what what is what is what is failure like given you? Failure is giving me everything, man. Um, I honestly, man, I credit every single failure I've ever had for where I am right now. Um, I I can so relate to what Jason was saying. I was like, I feel like I'm just getting closer and closer and closer to what I want to be doing. Um, and it's like I had an epiphany like two weeks ago that like I'm finally at a point where I can say all the actions I'm taking right now are exactly what I need to be doing. Um, I don't need to reevaluate for a while. I don't need to, I don't need to constantly be on the move. I, I'm finally at a point where like in the beginning, like I said, of June of 2012, um, I had no idea what I was doing at all. Like, I, I think I had like the faint idea of like shooting documentaries and putting them out for free or something like that. Like, and that's totally not even remotely what I'm doing now. And then I had like some men's fashion idea that I was going to do. And I had all of these random ideas and all of them obviously failed. Um, but each one, like, okay, each one was like, okay, that didn't work. Now let's try this next thing because like each idea I either didn't want to do it enough or I was afraid of failure or whatever it was. I know like with that men's fashion thing like at the same exact time I was getting into minimalism and I'm like fuck I can't do that I'm into minimalism now. It's like exactly the opposite of what I believe. So I had to uh, I had to kind of readjust and um, yeah man now like even like the SEO writing business I did, like the, my first success ended up not even being what I wanted to do. I found out that I hated writing random stuff every single day of my life and that it was just crushing my soul. So I was like, okay, this was good, learned some lessons, on to the next thing. And now, and now I'm here like 13 months afterwards and um, man, I just feel like all my actions, I'm, I'm probably still going to fail like 100,000 more times, but like everything is exactly where it needs to be because of all those failures. Yeah. Um, so, so, you know, I mean, Kevin, the reason you're on the show today is because I emailed you because I read about you in my buddy Sean Ogle's newsletter, and, you know, you were featured in his newsletter. You're one of his, like, location rebel graduates who actually did it, who built a business. I, I think you made like, like three grand in a month, right, doing... SEO, right? Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so, so yeah. So like that, but but so the reason we're even talking and having this conversation is because you did something, and um, I think doing like just do something. So uh, I I read Joel Runyon wrote a blog today about like the best advice he ever got three years ago, and um, I, I forgot what the three things was, but it was something like just freaking stand for something, like put your balls on the line, and then figure it out, <laughs> and. Um, yeah, just I. We all know those people who have wanted to, you know, start their cupcake factory or be a famous musician or just like be an, an artist. And like they've literally talked about it for ten years, for fifteen years. Um, they might not even like music, but you know, like it's just it's something sexy that when they were sixteen, that's that's the dream that they latched onto. Um, and just I. 
I mean, all of us, I have stuff that I still want to do, and um, just just do it. Just, like, do it, put yourself out there. Um, again, failure is just, just feedback. And I love what you said, Kevin, on how it's like everything that I have is because of my failures. I mean, like, the only reason why I'm here, the reason why I, I, I have a business and I get to make money in my pajamas and <laughs> is, you know, is because I had a lot of failures. And... I mean, I, I still felt all the time. So, so one that's coming up for me now is I lost a coaching client because um, she, you know, we had email correspondence. I'm like, hey, here's my rate for, for a month. Um, but then I got really busy with, with travel. So, you know, for me, balancing being lo uh, location independent and running a business, sometimes I don't do that that well. And, um, and I had to, you know, cancel a session because I was at World Domination Summit and, I didn't send her the pre-work, and then she's like, "You know what? Like this, this doesn't seem like a good fit." Um, and and I wrote her, and then we had more more email correspondence, and I was like, "Thank you so much! Like, thank you so much for for telling me that because I see there's a huge piece of my business, you know, the customer acquisition process that I need to look at, and that like I'm really sorry that I failed to serve you, and you know, I we emailed back and forth, and we still have a good." relationship but like I lost money and I lost being able to work with someone because there was a piece of my business that wasn't you know wasn't fully either automated or wasn't as efficient as it could have been um, did like did I beat myself up about it no like it's, it's fine I learned I made changes I know how to prioritize better if someone wants to if someone wants to give you money be like <laughs> here give me your money here's I'll make it as easy for you to give me money um, so, yeah, that's a little bit of what just came up for me. Yeah, I, uh, I totally agree, man. Um, I, I think, like, uh, wishing for more is such a common thing, even for, like, at any stage, even for, like, the Chris Gillibos of the world. Um, because even for him, I remember, like, reading or, or watching an interview with him the other day, and he's already he's already done like his big goal of visiting every single country in the world, and that's an astronomical goal. But then he was still talking. Okay, well then, what are my next steps? Uh, what do I want to do now? I want to have this huge network, but I haven't connected people as well as I could. And that's what he was saying he wanted to work on. And I think at any stage, wishing for more is common. But like, what separates a lot of people is Chris Gillibos actually going to do it like a hundred and ten percent, and there's no doubt about it. Mm. Right. Um, and it's funny that, that you say Chris, because Chris fails all the time, and like Chris writes about it. Like Chris, you know, for I think he's finally starting to scale his business more, and he's finally like he's bringing on more 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 team members. But like he ran a freaking empire, <laughs> like pretty much all by himself. And um, anytime I email Chris, he somehow magically responds in like five minutes. Um, and you know he's he's written about that openly too. Of like I I need more help and I should be having more people. Because I mean Chris has a he has a huge empire with WDS and the hundred dollar startup and with his new program and um, but yeah I mean Chris fails too. I fail. Jonathan Mead, you're a big failure all the time too. You know what I'm saying? But but that's why we're we're able to live the lives that we do is because like we keep pushing. We keep playing to our our, our our edge, right? Like whatever's uncomfortable, that's like that's where oh that's where I have to be going. Which which brings up like an interesting point. Maybe maybe the real definition of failure is not failing at all. You know, not having that courage to try something or you know, you you, you know what you want to do, you know what you need to do. But you stay small. You you hold back. You close up. Like you you withhold your gifts, your desires from yourself, from the world. I think I think if anything is really failure, that's that's probably failure more than anything. I would I would say. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you, Jonathan. I think um, you know holding your your heart prisoner and, and hostage and not allowing it out to play. Um, and not allowing your heart to come fully alive, to me, is the only failure. Putting yourself out there and trying, I mean, that is, that is no failure at all. Um, my childhood hero growing up, Michael Jordan, said, you know, um, 
you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. And th this is a guy that made the game-winning shot in college to get into the pros. And, uh, you know, how many, how many game-winning shots did he take that he missed? You know, you have to take some shots. You can't sit on the bench and think, you know, oh, woe is me, I, I can't do this, or I'll never be a great basketball player, or I'll never be a great internet marketer or blogger, or whatever it is that your dream is. If you're sitting on the bench and just saying all the, you know, rehearsing all the nevers in your head, um, yeah, that's, that's true failure. But getting out there and playing the game and taking the shots, that's where it's at, you know. Oops, muted. All right, yeah. Huh. I wonder. Uh, I wonder what would happen if, like, failure ceased to exist in the world. I think that probably a lot, like, nothing would exist, right? Uh. <laughs> Whoa, that's too deep, Jonathan. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean it's. I'll I'll save this. Well, it's. Oh, I'm trying to think. I'll I'll save most of this conversation because we are talking about sex and sexual energy in in a couple of weeks with Evian and and Blair. But um, I just posted a call for David's um, returning. I'm doing like a free six week coaching program for David's returning brothers, and uh, week three was all about sex, and um, it's. I think it's funny that as as guys we we put pressure like on day one even if we've never we've never had sex to like to be the best lover in the world like you put, like even though you you've never done it and um, I I think there's a there's a crossover to entrepreneurship right it's like we want to be just a kick ass internet marketer and make six figures in our first year even though like we've ne like we know nothing about it um, everything that you are today like everything that you can do subconsciously like drive a car or make scrambled eggs or even you know swim I mean there was a point where you absolutely couldn't do it and and it terrified you um, I can even remember taking like my first shower I think when I was six or seven and I was like whoa that shower ah it's so this, this is crazy it's coming out of the wall it's like I'm not just laying in it with my bath toys um, but now you know like, like now it seems silly to think about taking a shower as something scary um, but I, I think we put a lot of pressure on ourselves to be perfect from day one. You know, even even if we've, we've, we've never done that thing, whatever it is, like being public speaking or writing or blogging or running a business or, I mean, doing anything, starting a coaching practice, starting something around personal development, making an online community. Um, yeah, just, I mean, like, give yourself, give yourself permission to fail. Like, just, and... By just by doing that, like life gets so much easier. It's that 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 weight of perfectionism. It's like, oh my gosh, like it's like you're taking off that lead coat. You know, like when you get up from from the dentist after taking X-rays. It's like, oh gosh, like this. It feels a lot better. Like I I pretty much just play throughout life and just like throw stuff out there. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it makes money, sometimes it doesn't. But it's it's just like learning. And um, if you have to be perfect from day one. Like if you have to be perfect from day one, you failed already because none of us are perfect. Um, so yeah, just thought be nicer to yourself. <laughs> so, I don't know. Anyone else have follow up on on that? Yeah, um, I think taking things really seriously from day one is such a common thing um, because you want to take it seriously. If you're interested in something, you're going to take it seriously, and. Uh, we all have the aspirations and the and the, the visions of uh, the million dollars or, or whatever it might be, but it's like you're on day one. Like you've got a long ways to go. And um, I, you know, even to go back like with Jason and the sports example, like uh, I used to do jujitsu, which is like the ground stuff that you see in the UFC. And um, man, I got my ass kicked for like three months before I ever beat anyone. Like literally three months of losing before I won anything. Um, and it was like, obviously, you know, it was kind of like demoralizing. But at the same time, once I finally started to like get better, 
it was like all of those ass kickings totally like set the foundation because then my defense is really good, and then I could like finally work on offense. And um, and I like e even then though like I still took it very seriously. And uh, when I would go to competitions and stuff, I, I took it way too seriously and got all up in my own head. And that's you know that's getting up in your own head and taking things real seriously like that is a solid recipe for failure. But if you take a breather. Be like I've done. I failed like ten thousand times before. What what's one more? You know, it's not gonna kill me. Then um, I think it it opens you up to success like way more. Um, I so there, so there's a question from the internet from Paula Laws, and she says I'm a failure queen, but I don't see it as failure. I see it as just a choice that wasn't right for me, and I've made loads of choices. Um, but her question is. How do you know when it's the right one? How do you know when it's the right choice? Interesting. Yeah, I, I would say, hmm, it sounds like, uh, you know, when what you're talking about is using failure as feedback to help you discern what you actually want in, in life, what you actually want to do. And I think um, I think we kind of touched on that earlier. Like Kevin was talking about how you know the feedback from from doing those jobs that he didn't like helped him you know have a better understanding of what he did like. So failure in that sense can be really positive. But you know I, I think I think there's this uh, mistake that we often make that we we believe that at some point we're going to have perfect knowledge about exactly what we need to be doing or we're going to have perfect knowledge of this is exactly the right path for me right now and now I can relax now I can let that discovery process go and personally for me and you know I, I'm not speaking for everyone on on this on this uh, show obviously but personally for me I found that that discovery process never ends. You know, I just get a little bit closer, I get a little bit closer and you know, for me that failure helps me feel more what what, you know, what resonates with me. What what is what are those actions that are going to bring me happiness? Um what it, what is that path that I'm going to be most excited about exploring? So, when I go down the wrong path, like I'm like, "Oh, okay, that I don't like you know how hilly that was or something and then I, I see another path and then I find like oh there's bald eagles over there or something you know th that's awesome <laughs> um, but then the bald eagles leave and I'm like oh I'm sad you know like why, why can't they stay forever uh, so it, it, for me it's a process of constant rediscovery through failure and I, I have to be present with my emotions. I have to be present, you know, with my body, with with my mind, to really, you know, ask myself, does this resonate with me, or or not? So failure for me is more of a tool that helps me, that helps guide me to resonance, rather than um, failure itself uh, creates that resonance. I guess if that if that makes sense. Yeah, um, and um, I'm going to hand this over to Jason after I make this comment, just because you talked about following your heart, and I want you to talk more about that. But um, it's the right choice. Like it's it's when your heart and your gut say like, hell yeah, this is what I want to be doing. I mean, that like that's it. Mm -hmm. That's everything that I do. It, that's it's like one of my favorite quotes is, if it doesn't involve love or fun, what's the point? And um, yeah, what's the point if what you're doing isn't creating more love in the world or if what you're doing isn't fun, or if what you're doing, you know, drains you and instead of energizes you, um, the the right choice is it's the right choice for you too, right? It's not it's not my truth, it's not Jonathan Mead's truth, you know, it's not Kevin's truth. It's it's what lights you up, and and whatever lights you up, it's it's based off of your body of work, it's based off your off of your experiences that you've had, um, based off of memories, based off of maybe trips that you've taken, or people that you've talked to, or books that you've read, or you know, skills that you've gotten in your life, um, and when you distill all of that, like that's that's your right choice. 
Um, and the good news is that's the right choice. The bad news is that probably won't be the right choice in two years, five years, ten years. Um, you know, it's like be super on purpose, but there'll be a certain point where you sort of complete that purpose, and then it's like, oh, now what? And um, that's the point when some of us are are lost. So no one's ever really lost if they've just completed a purpose, whether it's it's high school or college or making your first million dollars or getting married or creating a nonprofit. There's oftentimes when you when you did it and you're standing on top of the mountain like ah like hell yeah, it's like oh wait now 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 what? I've been doing this for the past three years. Um, so I follow your heart, follow your gut. I mean follow your 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 intuition, if it feels good, go, you know, go towards that which is beautiful, go towards that, you know, which feels good, um, and it's your life. So, um, Jason, do you have any anything else to, to add to that? Yeah, definitely. I, I agree with Jonathan and, and you, Mike, as well. Um, but I, I have two pieces of advice. I think the first would be just to, to get real clear about who you are. I think it's important that um, you understand really clearly what makes you come alive and what you have to offer to the world in terms of your art and your gift and your strength and um, allowing those things to just really for you to really believe those things about yourself and kinda um, allow some of the external influences out there to kind of um, be silenced for a while as, as you really just start to believe in yourself. Um, I think that's important. But then the second piece of advice I'd have is I, th this really works for me. Get outside. Like get outside into nature by yourself. Take a hike. Um, go, go to a spectacular mountain view or a, a river or the ocean or whatever's nearby and just be still and quiet your heart. When I have a big decision in front of me, I think um, if I can find the time to be mindful and present and very still, there is a voice that will speak to me. And um, I really believe that that voice will draw me into the right direction and, and lead me into the right choice. Um, ultimately, I don't know if I believe in bad choices. I think we all make many choices along the, the path of our journey, but I think ultimately, it's all it's all going to work out and we're all going to be fine and we're all being led toward developing our true selves and our true art so that we can all ultimately offer the world what it is that um, uh, you know and serve the needs that that only we can serve yeah um, I totally agree man and uh, I think the the idea of like taking a break is uh, really really good I know that um, in June, uh, like just like about a month ago, actually, I took, like, I guess, sort of a vacation. My sister was getting married, and um, I just didn't open my laptop, like, pretty much at all for like a whole week. And um, I just gained so much perspective on everything that I wanted to actually do because the real indicator of, like, is this right for me is if you put it away for a while, do you miss it? Like, do you want to do that thing more? Like, do you, like, spend your nights thinking about it? Do you dream about it? Like, that's, if you, if it lights a fire when you're not doing it, then it's, it's clearly on the right path. And like I think Mike said, it might not be your right path for the next 10 years, but at least for right now, that's, that's exactly what you need to be doing. Interesting. Yeah, I was, I was reminded of when I was at WDS for, like, five or it was maybe like seven days, actually, <laughs> if you count the before and after. I ha I had this feeling like, oh, God, I, I really miss my work. Like, I, I can't wait to get back and, and dive into it. So I love that. I love that idea of, you know, if you put it away for a while, like, do you miss it? You know, absence, absence makes the heart grow fonder from things that you care about, you know? Um, hmm. Yeah, okay. that's... Um, so if if you went to like a spiritual teacher and I was like, what's my purpose? He would say, go go sit in a cave for three days and bring 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 nothing. It it will come to you. Um, so in, in in the modern day, we we really can't do that, but we kind of can, right? So I 
I love Jason what you said about nature. I know Jonathan, you're a huge nature guy. I, I am too. I I try and be outside as as much as possible. Um, but just really take away distractions. So like if you're struggling to find what's my purpose or what's my right choice, stop watching TV. Get off Facebook. No social media. Um, stop like reading. Stop reading books and stuff. And you know get off of like the self help roller coaster and just like really go internal and really start to think of, you know, it's like if if I was going to die in a month or on my deathbed, um, if I was going to die, what what gifts have I not given yet? You know, it's like what 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 have I not given to the world? Like what have I not left behind? Um, and there it is. That's your purpose for the next, you know, couple weeks or couple years or, you know, maybe the next couple decades. Um, but I, I'm so glad that you said that, Kevin, because I think we have way too many distractions and, and all these inputs coming in and even myself, like most of my, most of my friends on Facebook are, um, are entrepreneurs and I see shiny shit in my newsfeed all, all the time, like, oh, well, come to, come to Costa Rica and like, go, go skydiving with Richard Branson and like, look, like I'm riding a dolphin and I'm like, oh, like that looks cool. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I want to do that, but, but um, it's <laughs> if I just keep like chasing that, it's like being a like a just it's like you know being a crack addict. I, I forgot who said it, but someone recently told me it's like they a wheatgrass shot isn't as enjoyable as, as crack, like in the short term, but in in the long term, it'll you know it'll do something better for you. Maybe it was pace, or maybe it was brandy. It was it, it might have been someone on our show, um, but yeah, it's like. What what do you really 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 want? Like what's what's going to do the most good in the world? And um, and the way to find that out is just to cut all the crap out of your life and just go 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 inward. And um, nature is a great place to do that. So, so thanks for bringing those up. Um, yeah. Anyone else want to jump in? Yeah, I I would I would just echo echo that as well just like and realize remember you know I think this kind of theme is that failure is is feedback and the more you attempt to live your purpose the more you attempt to follow that the better you're going to get at knowing what your purpose is like Kevin was talking about earlier we all want to be perfect right from the beginning and that keeps a lot of us from following our purpose we we try to have this holy grail, like epic, fucking, like I'm gonna change everything about the world, and like, like, uh, like I need to go on this like 12 month journey, like to go to the pyramids, and like I'm gonna dig under the ground, and I'm gonna find this like gemstone that's gonna like unlock like a sunbeam that's gonna tell me my purpose, like written in the ground or something. It's not like that. I'm sorry. Like angels aren't gonna burst out of the sky, but. If you follow your purpose, if you like, even if you just know, like, my purpose right now is to just like love as much as I can, or my purpose right now is to just help someone. Like, if you do that, you're gonna get more clarity on your on your purpose. So I think like com a combination of solitude and taking out those inputs and being willing to not have perfect knowledge of what your purpose is, I think. I think that would that would serve you really well. Why don't we Why don't we wrap this up? We have a few more minutes uh, of the show. Why don't we wrap this up with just everyone sharing, um, you know, or maybe failing at, at sharing with someone what they would like what they would like to leave someone watching this with um, uh, as, as it relates to failure. Like let's let's fail at helping other people fail. Yeah. So I'll start off and just say just. Like, allow your heart to be free, you know, come fully alive in who you are and uh, what you want to offer to the world. And I'd also like to just read a quote by Stephen Pressfield that I think was pretty impactful for me and I hope it helps you as well. He says, this might not work. These four words are what every artist and entrepreneur should be saying as he or she launches their new novel, zombie flick, video game, or restaurant. It might not work. Really, it might bomb big time. That's the chance you and I have to take if we want to get ahead of the curve. Ahead of the curve is where hits happen. 
ahead of the curve is where the muse lives. If we call ourselves artists or entrepreneurs, that's where you and I have to live too. So this might not work. Go say it. Go do it. You know, make something happen and don't be afraid to fail. It's a beautiful place where beauty will arise from the chaos. Nice. Um, I'll go next. I, I love, love, love Stephen Pressfield's work too. So um, The War of Art and Turning Pro. You, you, everyone listening, you have to read those books. It'll, it'll help you tremendously um, with failure. I, I'm going to quote the great Jonathan Mead, <laughs> um, with I, I forgot what he said re recently, but it was, you know, the, the greatest failure of all is not trying. And, and when Jonathan said that, I just, oh, like I, I really felt it. And I, I think that's so true for, so, for most of the people out there um, who are living a conventional life and who think that, you know, so much of what we're doing is, is impossible and, you know, think that they can never be a, a musician or an artist or just w whatever their childhood dream is, they've, they've locked it away. And, like, and I feel sadness for them. And, and yeah, just the, the greatest failure is not trying at all. Um, so that's what, that's, that's what I'm walking away from, from this conversation with uh, you guys. Yeah, and um, you know, for me, I think failure is really just a cost of being an entrepreneur. Like it's just, it comes with the territory. And uh, it really all comes down to perspective because ultimately we're all dying. Um, you know, I don't, it's not something that people want to think about, but we are dying. Like the average lifespan in the U.S. is 80 years old. So even if you're only 20 years old, 25% is already done. So it, you kind of have to think it from that perspective and like, is this failure, is it going to kill me? Am, am I going to be homeless? What, like, how bad is it really going to be? Even if I just fail, like, just completely like blow out, just everything gets screwed up. How bad is it really going to be? Like I know even Jason, like you had an epic failure, but dude, look where you are now, man. You know, so it it definitely it's all about perspective and kind of playing out like what Tim Ferriss says. What's the worst thing that could happen? Really, like what is that thing that would just be the worst case scenario, and then play out the best case scenario. You know, imagine what that looks like, and then the next step is just putting one foot in front of the other and doing it. So that's that's uh, definitely what I would take away from this. I think what, what I what I what's I guess what's resonating with me the most is what is the cost of not failing? You know? What is like what would your life be like if you didn't fail at all? And are you willing are you willing to live with that? You know, is that a choice you're willing to make? Because we all can make a choice right now to take a risk, fail, you know, get feedback, learn, or we can make a choice to hold back. And yeah, I don't know. I just like that. Just thinking about that makes me emotional because I think about all the times that I've held back. You know, when I wanted to say something to someone and tell them how I really felt, or um, when I wanted to create a product in the way that I really wanted to, but I, then I started second-guessing myself and thinking about the way everyone else did it and what they were going to think about me, and I, I compromised, you know? So I just encourage you to, like, what is the cost? Think about this. What is the cost of, of not failing? And this will leave you with that. I encourage you to check out uh, Jason from uh, Tribely, tribe.ly. And we've got Kevin Cole from Perform Destiny. Uh, check out his work. Mike Rostowski is the man. Uh, Rostowski.com. And I'm Jonathan Mead. Thank you so much for watching. Please, please uh, share this with someone if you if you feel like they could benefit from failing more. Um, and you know, leave a comment on our show. Tell us tell us uh, what what you think. You can check it out at PaidToExist.com forward slash show and thank you thank you guys for for showing up here and and thank you everyone for for watching thanks john thanks everyone and